I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I'm really pleased that you'd be willing to spend some time with us. Last week we were, I guess we do this on a weekly basis, but uh, last week we got a chance to meet Brent Smart, and today we get to meet Ruth Smart, his dear wife, of 52 years. Is that yes. right? Yes, yes. <laughs> 52 well, wonderful years. Well, it's nice to have you here. And it was a joy to talk to him. And I'm sure that you, did you have any thoughts on his uh, visit with us? I was happy that he was able to come before sure. the, yeah. your audience and share, share, and his, share story. his story. I was really yeah. happy about that. And. Have you noticed a difference in him? I have. Have you? I have. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of difference? It seems like there's been a burden lifted off of both of our shoulders. It seems like we're more freer. Yeah. It, we talk more. We talk daily about Jesus. Did you ever do that before as a no. Mormon? No. Oh, no. I used no. to go... Well, I don't. I could almost say 65 years I didn't talk about Jesus to anybody. I mean, I thought about him, and we talked in church what we did, but just so different, isn't it? It's a different. It's a different Jesus that yeah. that we have in our family and in our home now, yeah. and um, stress has been relieved. Guilt, maybe Guilt. Of, of the past mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. You just trusting and resting in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. <laughs> so tell us, where were you born? I was born in Lewiston, Utah. Oh, okay, up north, huh? Mm-hmm, up north. Well, you were ex telling me a little earlier that your father actually knew Martin or met Martin Harris. Well, I think that he he went by his house, and Martin oh, okay. Harris used to come out. To the fence To the fence and, and tell his stories, and right. yeah. he was a character. Martin Harris right. was a character. Yeah, I know he died quite late in the 80s, or in the 1800s. I'm yes. not sure exactly yes. the dates and all, but yes. up in Clarkston and all. Mm -hmm. So you're up from that area, and uh, did you stay there most of your life? Um, I was raised in, in Preston, yeah. Franklin County, Idaho, oh, mostly, and but they're all within... 12 yeah. miles of each other, oh, okay. you know, I mean, it's, it's... And you were active LDS, were you? I've been active like LDS my entire life. Yeah. My entire life. Isn't that amazing? Yes, well, it we'll is. get into that. Uh, I mean, we just, that's just our life, isn't it? Kind yes. of like Brent was saying, you just, that's what you do. Yes. Seminary, I'm sure, and Sunday school and I, primary. I had and, seminary, and I had yeah. Sunday school, and I had primary, and I got all my individual awards, and I did all my two and a half have minute the diplomas talks, and yeah. the diplomas and the bandolos back then, and yeah. and um, I tried to fit into a circle that really I wasn't that much welcome oh. into because my parents um, were not active Mormon. And you get and judged for that, don't you? Yes, you do. You do, yeah. and they didn't drink hard liquor, but they drank beer. Oh, and and Sinners. yes, they did. They yes, they yes, they did. And coffee um, and tea and stuff. And, and mostly, mostly beer. Oh, My dad okay. was a Swede, and um, Swedish people give beer to water down beer to their children even, yeah. uh, because of the the water back in the day yeah. when it wasn't good water. Yeah. But um, so. At the age of four, I, sh I could say that I 
I knew and loved Jesus Christ. At the age of four, I would get really? myself across the square. I could see the church getting lively, the cars coming, and I would... To the Mormon church. To the Mormon because. church. Mm -hmm, and I would run a t across the square, and I would... Go to church. Go to church yeah. mm -hmm, by myself. Yeah. By oh. myself. Oh, I see. Yeah. And so where did you meet, or, or oh, excuse me, so you get through high school, then what happens, I guess? Then what happened, um, that was a sort of a rough road to go, to go, but I did get through high school, and I I met Brent. That yeah, you well, where, did to you meet him? where did you meet him? I met him when I was in, working in his mother's cafe. That's what, yeah, mm -hmm. he was it's saying. It's called the were, Snooty Cat. Oh, up there in mm -hmm. Preston, mm -hmm. huh? And um, was was I, it love at first sight for you too? It was for me. Um, was it? it was interesting, though. I didn't know that he was her, her son. Oh, you didn't at first. No, I didn't. No, not at first. I didn't. Not when I first seen him. And he was a lanky drink of water, trying to get his legs untangled from being in the jeep. He was a hunter, and he <laughs> had he had dogs, and yeah. he had been hunting and with his father. And when you first met him. When I first met him. Mm -hmm. And. Was it important for you to know that he was LDS, or did you when just I, knew that? I, I knew that he was LDS. It was important for me that he was LDS. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, you'd planned on getting married in the temple, for sure. I wanted to get married in the temple, yeah. and, and I had learned through watching the ward members in my ward. I had, even even though that was a hard go, yeah. I had learned what I wanted to be, what yeah. what I wanted my family to be, what I wanted, family, you know. yeah, how I wanted to raise my children, and yeah. and. Um, so did yeah. you have to talk him into going to the temple? Oh, oh no. no, he, he oh, said no. he. Had, oh no, I didn't have his and I, his and I remembrance of that is a little bit different, yeah. but yeah. no. You yeah. know, you get the pressure of doing ordinations, and and stuff, baby yeah. blessings, and baptisms, and sure. and all that. And when you have three children, you know that pretty stretches out for yeah. for a ways. Yeah, it does. You know, over the years, you know, yeah. you just get one done, and another one's ready, and you just get that done, and you've got an ordination. And yeah. so, was it in the Logan Temple? I, I think we were sealed in the Logan, Logan Temple in 1965. Wow, well, good for you. Yeah. So 52 years, that's awesome. Yeah, 52 years. Yeah, we up. were married in 64. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, so uh, you're just active in the church and busy. Active and in the church. Raising the family and all that. Raising the family. And that went on for, I guess, 30, 40, 50 years almost, didn't it? Yes, it did. So, yes, it did. Um, any questions ever come up about, uh, that bothered you about the church? or? No, I was told not to look when they, I think it was in the 80s when the Godmakers came out. And it was a big buzz around the wards and such. Yeah. We were told not to look. I didn't look. We were told not to read anything anti. I didn't read anything anti. Yeah. Okay. I, um, I believed in truth. I, I, it's, it makes me sick now to think that maybe I was somewhat prideful in Oh, in, I definitely. In checking all the boxes and crossing oh, sure. all the T's. Don't we, I mean, that's the whole thing about Mormonism is yeah. is the pride we have about making it to the celestial kingdom and the, mm -hmm. the rest of the world not going to make it unless they join the church. And I mean, that's it's, the and pride you know is built all. into the system. You know, you just have to bring everybody else with you. Yeah. It's a, a terrible burden to put upon a Mormon yeah. young lady that just got married to all the things that you have to do. Yeah, and don't we judge? Yes, well, I mean, we judge. Like yes, you, you yes. were saying earlier, judge somebody that drinks uh, something that they, I mean, and, and then you learn later, as we've learned now, that it doesn't matter what goes into the mouth, it's what comes exactly. out of the mouth. It even you know? says that in the Bible. Uh, of course, so, uh, but we judge harshly people yes. that can't keep the word of wisdom and, yes. and can't keep their covenants in yeah. the temple and stuff. Do you know, uh, I want to say one thing about my parents. Both my parents taught me to pray. Oh, good. Um, my mother would, we had rickety old bridges that would cross the Bear River into our, into our town. And, yeah. and we would scream about, we were scared to cross the rickety old bridges. to would just fall in. That we would, it would break and we would go yeah. in. And, and my mother got out in front of the car and said a prayer to, to Heavenly Father. That the car, that's what Mormons you'd be able call to me. Get over, yeah. And then got back in the car, and we were all okay, and we crossed the bridge, and away we went. There you were. And my dad, my dad on the dry farm, 
he had a, the first caterpillar, well, I don't know if it's the first one, but he had a crank caterpillar, and he, um, he tried to crank it, tried to get it started. I was with him. He tried to get it started. It wouldn't start. He finally got down in the dust and said, yes, for, I said you'll have that. to do the rest because I've done all I can and said a prayer and then got up and then cranked the cat and it started. started. And so even though my parents were not active Mormons, I had um, good examples, of, didn't you? Good examples. And my parents embraced me. Yeah. They were not judgmental, even though I had such a short period with my mother. They embraced me. Oh. It didn't, I, you know, I couldn't be too stinky or too dirty <laughs> that what they wouldn't pick me up and, and yeah. laugh. They sang two part harmony together. So I have an admiration for my, my parents and, and have loved and respected said. them my entire oh. life. Well, that's neat. So you come, go along, and then what happens kind of to. Have you see things differently? Was it Brent first, or did you kind of? I think we sort of. At the same, you were going to a Bible study. He uh, said in Evanston when we now, lived did in you Wyoming. Learn things there that you hadn't known before about in Mormonism. Uh, my eyes were closed. My ears were deaf to what the ladies said. Even that even table. in the Bible study. If even in the Bible study, wow. because I thought I was going was to this? tell them. Oh, you well, thought you'd tell them more <laughs> about Mormonism. Exactly. It would be around 1999, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, in 1980, let's see, in 1987 is when our son was killed on his mission. Oh. And and I, I, in order for me to be um, true to my own ch my own child, um, it was very real to me that I must be active and, and do Mormon everything could I could be. do yeah. to. Have reconnect him in the with my child, in the my, my middle son. Yes. Oh. Yes. So. So that was a driving force for you to be the best Mormon you could be. Yes, and and when I attended um, the Bible study courses, which was over a period of two years, and non-denominational courses yeah. with those ladies, um, I thought that I could bring them along too. <laughs> you Get know, them and and, to and the it church. hurts now to think of the pride that I had in my clean house and my, you know, all, all everything that I had accomplished and everything I had yeah. done. But I still did not know the love that I, I know now yeah. of my Savior, Jesus Christ. What, how did you feel about Jesus as a Mormon? I always loved Jesus because I, yeah, I got you the, said that they, even at four. the stories. Uh, it's not the same Jesus no. um, that, Mormons, that Mormons teach. Now, it's I know Mormons same. say that they are Christian, but we, there is a difference. You, you felt the difference between your Mormon Jesus and your Christian yes. Jesus. Yes, I felt the difference yeah. uh, big time. Um, yeah. I actually know, actually I had called, I had called Sean McCraney to ask him to pray for me in um, 2015 hmm. because I, I felt like I was a fly on, on on a flypaper that just when I'd get my, my one of my legs off the flypaper, here come the Mormons and, and ask and, and, and be nice and want me to come back and, and then I'd be stuck again, you know. And so, so this, this was in all 2015. Very, all very recent, isn't it? All very recent. Yeah. And um, he prayed for me that, that people would <laughs> show their true colors and, and that they would stay away. Um, from me and not try to reenact, reactivate me back into the Mormon Church, yeah. and um, shortly after that, I, I had my born again experience. Tell us about that. Um, I was in my house. I was in my family room. I was on my way from one room to into another, and um, he told me that I was his. It was in. It came into my mind and into my body that I was his, and it was like he marked me. He. Um, it's like he touched me. Um, he didn't touch me, but yeah, it was as if I was marked as his, and it was his decision. He had been calling to me for a long time, but I hadn't. Um, I hadn't heard. We just don't listen, do we? No, I hadn't those. listened. Can you see back now where different things happen? Oh yes. To, he uh, talked to me when our son was killed. He um, he told me not to worry, daughter. It won't be long, and you will see him. And I actually thought maybe I'd die. Maybe that was I was going to die. Oh, I see him that way. And that's how I would see him. Yeah. But actually, um, the Lord, the Lord 
provided for me as a mother to know that all was well with my son. Mm. And, um, and it's hard to explain into yeah. words. Yeah. And then I was reading the Bible, I was in Ephesians, and that's where it talks about He, may, he calls you to Him. There's yeah. many places in the Bible. Right. He's, he's the potter yeah. or the clay. I mean, there's many places in the Bible where Jesus talks about us right. being His. Yeah. And also talks in Ephesians about grace and works. Did you ever understand grace Never. as a Mormon? That was the best news I'd ever heard in my entire life, was Total. that Jesus would decide. He would be the one, not, not the hierarchy of the, hmm. of the Mormon church. It would be Jesus, and He's fair. Yeah. He's honest. And wh how did that compare with your temple experience where you have to go through and have all the ordinances and well, live the laws and all that? I, I did everything I could, could to a, be a good, good LDS Mormon. person. Yeah. And um, it tr when I watched Matt Wilder um, and he talked about From Adam's the, Road. the yeah. temple mm -hmm. yeah. and he talked about what had happened to him with regard to the temple. It's actually uh, very cultish. Um, occultish, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's occultish, yeah. yes. And, and Masonry and stuff. Don't believe me, uh, anybody that's hearing, go out and check for yourself. Look up masonry um, in the temple. Yes, <laughs> or look just up masonry. 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 They'll find out all the hand signals and the handshakes and everything. And then all the strife that has been caused. There's been some good done by the LDS Church, but all the hardship and strife that was caused to Joseph Smith's wives and Brigham Young's wives and the blacks and, and, and continuing on and on with Heber C. Kimball giving his daughter and uh, to know. Joseph Smith. Yeah, and those are things we just don't know as Mormons. Do we? No, and I never Unless knew. you're willing to. Now, your husband read In Sacred Loneliness and Fun We read Brody's it together. Book. Oh, did you? We had two books. Um, mm -hmm. Were you surprised that he was looking and willing to, or? Oh, no, no. no. We're so, we're so connected. Close together. We're so close that, no, we yeah. would, a day wouldn't go by that we wouldn't talk about, about that. But Doris Hansen also gave us a lot of, um, from her show, Polygamy, from her show, What Love Is This? We, we found family there. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, yeah, we, and, and you also, um, oh. your 17 minutes that you gave was strengthened me because, not to, not to put you down, but you're, you're about my age. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> and, and, in fact, I'm a little older. And but. you actually coming forth and saying your testimony gave me strength. Really? So I, I want to thank you for that. Oh, I oh. do. Praise God. That's, uh, Praise God. It really was uh, a real interesting moment in time, and my journey was, of course, it's on the, on the record there, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that very yeah. much. Yeah. But so all of these influences kind of made you start seeing the church in a different way. Was it shocking to you? I it mean, was, was very it? shocking. Yeah. I cried for all of 2015. Just it it, so it was upset. so shocking, shocking to me. Uh, I had sent a son on a mission that never came home. Mm -hmm. The church lied about how his death occurred. Um, I um, So to find out that it wasn't true. true, and I can say for a fact that the Mormon church is not true. Yeah. It's not true. And as I started learning more and more, and you, probably you too, uh, you just realize what... Uh, the different ways that they've kind of covered over different things. Now, one thing you did do was the same thing I did was get a red letter Bible. I did. And what did you think of that when you? I loved did it. Did you just? I just read the the red words. Yes. The first time. Yes. Because uh, I wanted to know what what did Jesus say and what didn't he say? Because in Mormonism, we kind of combine all these four scriptures, the Pearl of Great Prize, Doctrine of Covenants, all that, we combine mm -hmm. them as the gospel. Mm -hmm. So when you say, I'm going to quote a scripture, they quote it from the Book of Mormon as though yes. it's true, where the Bible doesn't say anything about that kind of stuff. And of course, Nothing. the Book of Mormon doesn't either in many cases. But. Do you know, and when you're taught that the Bible can't be trusted completely, it's the eighth article of faith. Exactly. And when you're, so when you lose your Mormonism, when you lose your religion, when you lose uh, the fact that the 
Book of Abraham was false. In fact, at the Kinderhook place, when you when you lo lose all that, yeah. then where do you go? Yeah. Do you go to the Bible, which you've been taught is not true? You have. Was to... it hard for you? Did you have oh, that no. moment of atheism or anything? I mean, well, you say you had. Well, I struggled with that. I I didn't struggle. I. I know about people becoming agnostic yeah, and atheists, and yeah. atheists, but I will not go there because I know for a fact that there is a God, and, you, and I know that he, I'm saved. I'm His, you put your trust and no in one will take me out of His hand. No yeah. one will take me from Him. Yeah, nobody can do that. No. Isn't that neat? It doesn't matter how high up you are in the church. I can tell you for a fact <laughs> that I am Jesus Christ, and I belong to God. Yeah, isn't that it? And that, well, and it's so such a simple message. It's so godlike in my mind. Yes. All this other stuff of rules and regulations and all that, that just isn't godlike. The simple, I came and I died for you and paid yeah. for your sins, and, yeah. and through my righteousness, I will make you righteous. You yes. Know? Through his righteousness, we become righteous. Yes. Such a simple, glorious message. And I. I just wish all my Mormon friends would open their hearts and eyes and minds to, to hear that. It's interesting what Martin Luther King said about, um, I, may, I will not remember the angry words of my enemies, yeah. but I will remember the silence of my friends. Yeah. And, and it's you interesting. feel like that's happened to you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, they're frightened. I know you're frightened, <laughs> um, but... I was frightened. I was frightened for the pain that this was caused my family. Um, Has it been hard on your children, your other well, two boys? All my children, or most of my children, my grandchildren, my great grandchildren are LDS, and um, very active, I guess. And, yeah, and and um, find the truth. Read the Bible. The Bible's little. The Bible is just a little book. <laughs> when you when you when you look at how much studying we did with regard to the Mormon Church, with the Book of Mormon, yeah. the Doctrine and Covenants. Yeah, that's what we always read. The second, third, and fourth thousand years, the doctrinal commentary on the Book of Mormon, which yeah. is like four books, I think, something yeah. like three or four books. Yeah, there's diff a lot of different ones. Oh, yeah. the studies that you do yeah. when it's all contained in the Bible. The yeah. Bible. So you read, you read this red letter Bible, and have you now, what do you think of the Bible? I love the Bible. My <laughs> husband can vouch. I never, I never go anywhere without it. Yeah. I never go to bed without reading it. Yeah. I read it during the day, and my favorite. It's so different, isn't it? It's so different. Yeah. It's such a different life. Yeah. We're free. <laughs> well, do you th have you had a difficulty sharing it with family? I mean, they, or do you, do you just don't even talk about it very much? It's flowing out of me now like water. <laughs> Is it? I, um, I'm testifying when I voted, I was testifying to my friend, I have found Jesus. Yeah. And you can find him too. All you do is need to read, pray, that he will show you the truth, and he will show it to you because he promised he would. Yeah. So when did you go to a Christian church the first time? Or was that up there in It Princeton? was about 2016. We went yeah. to Main Street Church. Oh, up in Brigham mm -hmm. City. Well, they're the ones that mm -hmm. sponsor and support mm -hmm. this show. And we've gone was to that Grace different Fellowship? the first time you went? Oh, oh the, yes. What what did you think of it compared the guitar, to uh, Dorothy, the guitar? Dorothy playing the guitar. They, yeah. they play the guitar and sing. Yeah. And, and the I words are it. up on the. Yes. And it was all about Jesus, right? It's all about Jesus. Yeah, it's so different. It's not about me. No. It's about Jesus and what well, He's well, done. It's not praise to the man or anything else, oh, is it? No, Isn't no. Isn't that so different? No. It's all about Jesus. Yeah. And it's not about doing your home teaching. It's not about doing your visiting teaching. No. <laughs> and uh, and the message I know, uh, Pastor Catlin, Jim Catlin is is such a wonderful teacher. Did you? Uh, He's learn online. Things? Yeah. I yeah. listen to his sermons online. I've gone through Romans with him and. Um, He's also a scientist, yeah. And he's talked about the scientific findings that they're finding now with yeah. regard to the universe. Yeah, and yeah. the Bible, and the, the archaeology, Bible. and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just so different. And to to have a a love now for the Bible and an appreciation for the really the manuscripts that are there to support the the Bible and the Dead Sea Scrolls and everything. We just don't. I don't know why we don't know that as Mormons, but it's just. 
again, we're kind of in, I've said it before, but we're kind of in a little tunnel, tunnel of thought process and we just don't think outside. We get so caught up in works. We're so works oriented. The, the yeah. Mormons are so works oriented. They, you know, and, and it's just almost like you can, you actually go to Desert Book and buy a checklist uh, on all <laughs> the things to, that you need to do and how many things you've done and, yeah. you know. It's very robotic in a way too, isn't it? It's I mean, unfeeling. We, um, yeah. You know, home teaching is a good thing if you yeah. really want to be there and if they really want you there. Yeah. But if you're going to, for the numbers. <laughs> on the 31st of the yeah, month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just to just to do the checklist and to say you did it. It becomes very um, yeah. yeah. Well, and a very proud thing when people can say, "Well, all my children went to the temple, or all my children went on missions, or something." It's and I've a been lot there. Of pride. Yeah, we all have. And I, I I apologize to the people that 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 I thwarted yeah. in my climb, my cat climb up the. <laughs> At the drapes, you know, but men and women, yeah. they climb the drapes in the Mormon church. Yeah. Their position is everything to them. Yeah. And um, we just, I just think we see things so differently now and have a trust in God that we just never had before, right? Right. Yeah. I, I trust him implicitly. Now, you made a little phrase, uh, I think it was uh, a reed in the wind. What did you mean by that when you... Do you remember what, saying that? It just seems to me that when, um, like for instance, 19, 1990 yeah. when they changed the temple ordinance, or 78 when they changed the... Or even when they changed polygamy yeah, in when 1890. They, yeah. I mean, if it's God's work... So put your finger up and see which way the wind's blowing and then change to that position. Yeah. And right now, one of the things that brought me out quickly, I forgot to tell you, was... Um, the policy that they made against the, the children that children. lived with LGBTQ parents. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I that mean, they, who, who, what, where is the inspiration there? Yeah, why do you men want to pick on for their, children? Men will be punished for their own sins, you know, it says in the second article of faith. That's and, right. Yeah, so that bothered you a that lot. That bothered me immensely. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. That is how come that... With all this other study you've done. That happened in November. Yeah. And November 15th. But you'd been reading up until then. Oh, and yeah. Kind of. Well, yeah. yeah. All of 2015. Yeah. And that was the straw. Well, Ruth, guess what? We're out it's of time. Over. It's okay. over. <laughs> you did it. You made it. Well, well it's a wonderful story, but, but it's all about Jesus, isn't it, now? It's all I about Jesus. I mean, we rest, rest in him. We trust him and, and his word, the Bible. It's just a glorious message. You will never find me ashamed about my Savior, Jesus Christ, ever. Good for you, well, your sweetheart. Thanks, Ruth. And coming down from Preston, I appreciate that very well, much. Well, thank you so for having us. We'll see you next time. Bye.